from the other day. Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. It was uh, internet troubles this morning. Oh, I am still kind of tired, though. Got to bed a little bit later than I usually do. But, you know, I was also out and about thinking that would have sent me to bed earlier. But, uh, usual. Um, hang out with my best friend, watching shows on a, uh, oh, shoot, did I hit done? Is this actually saying games and demos on it as it should? Let me just pop into the Twitch. Bit discovery, so I did get that right. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, no, I um saw all my my siblings and their kids, and once. One, one set of my um cousin and uh, her children, her child. Um, my other cousin was, uh, her son unfortunately wasn't well, so they didn't show up. But, you know, next time. Um, what was I, the other thing I was going to say? But, yeah, no, no, and then, yeah, things got away from me. Woke up this morning on time and then went to turn on my PC and there was no internet. It took a little while for it to kick in. Um, we will continue Act 3 of Pepper's Adventures of Time if I can work out how to sit at my computer looking at my screen without seeing the sun flash in my eyes. Uh, we've now gotten to the time of year that the sun is coming out at this time. Uh, you know what I'll do? I've got a light up here that is the reason why this blind is open. I'm going to take it down. We plug it in later in another place where the sun doesn't shine on my face. Okay, <laughs> I was like, that's the perfect place to put it. Forgets that sun exists at certain times. <clears throat> I think it was like during Bad Batch the other day where I just suddenly went, Oh my god, the sunlight! But we're hitting that time of year that uh, it's starting to get warm here again. Just starting, it's absolutely freezing right now. Um, let's see what temperature is it before I... <sighs> I'm a yawny child. Um, where is OBS gone? It's hiding there before, behind. Let's see. No one I know is in the chat yet. Oh gosh, yeah, it's currently seven degrees. Spring has sprung! <laughs> Spring has sprung. All right, so let's see. Where were we up to? Ah, yes. Ben in his... I feel like that I could have put this cursor and it would actually fit over his eyes. I guess the cursors were bigger in um, the DOS version. Now it just looks like he's got three eyes, which I guess is disturbing in itself. All right, time to talk to this fool. Uh, Mr. Franklin, can I talk to you? Talk away, little dude. Words are like birds are truly free. Oh, jeez, Uncle Fred really did fry his brains. Hey, no groovy brain gives me... Oh, my groovy brain gives me no pain. Uh, anyway, Mr. Franklin, could you help me save my dog? He was uh, kidnapped by General Pew and his daughter. They've taken him away and... Uh, Hey, man, mellow out. Here, take this string. I wear it to remind me to forget anything stressful. Uh, thanks. But, Mr. Franklin, how do I get my dog back? Can you help me, please? Uh, as a human human being, I can't refuse. Here, take my, uh, read my doctrine of personal melanists. It'll help you come to grips with the, your hostility, you dig? Uh, I do not dig. But I, I don't want to come to grips with my hostility. I I want my dog. Hey, chill out. It's your dog's destiny to be with the pews. Peace, baby. You absolute dick. Mr. Franklin, are you sure you can't help me? Chill, I must med- Oh, child, I must meditate. Go seek your inner peace somewhere else, would you? Oh, you absolute dickbag, sir. Oh, man. I, 
If I can't get Ben back to normal, who knows what could happen to history? It's almost like my Uncle Fred didn't think about it. It's great, Uncle Fred. Uh, let's read this. Dr. Melanus. I don't know, it's his electricity book. Pamphlet says, Sir, I'm gonna get much more hostile. If you can't help me. No, I, yeah, 100% Dee Dee. Hello, Dee Dee. Hello, Sam. We're literally just starting up. Um, here we go. D the Doctrine of Personal Melanus by Benjamin Franklin, Guru of Grooviness. Yikes, the doctrine goes on to say, follow these 13 guidelines for groovy living and you'll be like, one totally, totally cool, do or do that. One, pig out, eat until you hurl, drink until you slosh. Two, chatter, talk all the day, time of day, night and day. It's fun. Three, be a slob. Life's too short to be neat, man. I mean, 100%. Uh, make the uh, four. Never make promises. If you did, you'll have to, like, actually do something. Wow. Five. Waste money. Money's like the root of all evil, so throw it away. Six. Be lazy. Why would you waste your energy doing anything? Chill out and meditate. Seven. Lie. It's easier than telling the truth. Actually, no, it, it, lying can be extremely difficult to do. One, most people can't do it convincingly. And two, you then have to keep track of your lies because otherwise it's going to be just as sticky as the truth in some cases. Uh, just, the kids, just don't lie because it ain't, it ain't worth it in the end. Um, eight, don't get involved. Life isn't fair anyway. You can't change anything, man. Nine, party hardy, like, totally do everything to excess. Ten, avoid baths. Smelling bad is, like, totally natural, but, like, you know if it's a hot tub? You know, like, if it's a hot tub. You know? If it's hot tub. Eleven, let it all out. If something goes wrong, have a cow. It's good for you. I mean, it can be cathartic. It also makes your nose grow. Yeah, yes. 12. Love the one you're with. Being t <laughs> Love the one you're with. Being faithful to your steady is for like the birds, man. Wait, but usually if you say it's for like the birds, isn't that the opposite of what you want to want to do? It's like, hey, that's for the birds. You ain't a bird, man. 13. Be arrogant. Always toot your own horn loudly. Oh no. Did that used to be Ben Franklin's 13 virtues? Look in your documentation to find out. No, it was not. <laughs> it's the, uh, I mean, I can get out that, but, um. Oh, I, I just have to truth him. False. There was a real Ben Franklin, of course, but he never hang out, never turned into a hippie and hung out in a hot tub. Evil Fred's evil machine is at work. I mean, I just called him Evil Fred's evil <laughs> machine, so. You could just, the, the evil's part would cancel each other out, and it's just like, Uncle Fred's machine. Okay, we have a schematic for the Ben, blah, 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 blah. We have for the, the, the thing. Oh, magnet. Don't mind if I do. Excuse, no. I want the magnet, Pepper. Hey, check out your schematic, man. Mr. Franklin, look what I have. It's the schematic for your famous key kite experiment. I found it in your workroom. I guess it's not famous yet, but you know. That's nice, child. You keep it. I'm like totally beyond science now. I'm into con cosmic consciousness, you dig? Go meditate in the cabbage patch, okay? Cosmic cosmicness, my foot. He looks like a cosmic couch potato to me. What'd you say, child? The music of the universe was filling my ears, so I didn't hear you. I said, if I find the stuff for your experiment, will you show me how it works? Please, Ben, please! Well, after I've had my nap, perhaps, on second thought, I don't think I feel like it. The water's so cold, it's ruining my, my relaxation. Hmm. If I get you some more hot water, will you help me then? Uh, I hot tub, eh? This tub is getting real cold. 
Uh, hot water, so yeah, hot water, I guess. Uh, alright, sure, kid, I'll do whatever you say if you give me some more hot water. Look at all this pop, 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 pop happening considering it's not hot. And here's the cabbage patch here. You want Pepper to just chill out over here? I don't think so, sir. I don't think so. <laughs> Dumps lava into the tub. I'm trying to remember what you have to do to get the... the. Oh, hang on. I remember something, alright. Yeah, it's gonna get drafty. Pepper doesn't want the step stool. It's really... You, Pepper, you need the step stool. Because look. You can't climb that. I mean, technically, you probably could slowly. Oh, man. I'm too short to climb up past these broken rungs. If only I had something to step on. Like, maybe like a stool. The stool's broken? How? What's wrong with it? <laughs> Pepper's afraid she might break if she tries to use it for anything. Bullshit. It's standing there in front of a table. <laughs> Mr. Franklin, I, apparently I don't want this fucking step stool, even though I know I need it. Um, I guess I could take a look at that schematic and see if. I oh, know the schematic must have gotten wet. The ink's all blurry. The only thing Pepper can read are the some letters at the bottom of the page. They say. Ah, to find the schematic, turn to your documentation on page 18. Let me get that documentation up. Baby. Where is it? Manual. I think it's manual. I don't have an app to open .doc file. But I looked at... Oh, that's right, because I, I realized it was a .doc. Um... Peppers, benches in time, manual. That's the reason why that is in my history. Dooba dooba doob. Alright. Page 18, they said. It's page 9. That's a word search. Here we go. He need a fine silk kite, a silken string, a brass key, and a complete Leyden jar. The Leyden jar, uh, presented here for the amusement and edification of the reader, is a schematic design of the scientist's Musin Chen Box wonderful bottle, the Leyden jar. The Leyden jar consisted of a large glass bottle wrapped inside. Uh, and out with tin foil, it may be filled with water or iron shot, and should be stoppered with a rubber cork pierced through by an iron rod. The Leyden jar is capable of storing powerful charges of electric electrical fire, and should be handled with extreme care. The noted American scientist Ben Franklin once electrocuted and cooked a turkey with such a jar, but not before he nearly executed himself. Good work, Ben. Good work. Um, da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. All right, I guess we've got to make some hot water, so she didn't want the make. Oh, there's the stopper for the jar. Oh, hey, Sally. Let's talk. Miss Franklin, what do you think about your parents' strange behavior? <sighs> And of course, I'm worried about them, of course. Papa's been so strange of late and Mama's always out. Where, does your, where do you suppose your mother goes, Sally? Oh, I wish I knew. I know her fiery nature, though, and I fear for her safety. I fear she's become a hooker. Uh, I wish she'd walk up to uh, she'd walk up right to General Pew and swat him if she thought it would help Papa. Cool beans. I'm taking these fucking matches. What is it you need, lad? I'm just gonna get some matches. Why for, friend? The fire's gone and I thought I'd light it for you. Forgive me, my friend, but I think not. My mother gave me strict instructions not to light the fire, and I'm not about to give father any hot water, you see. Mother said the only reason I should light the fire was in case of emergency, so, um, thank you for your kind offer anyway. Uh, how long has your father been in this condition, Sally? Not long, lad. Just a fortnight ago, he was in his workroom writing. When I heard him cry out, I came out to see he was lying on the floor. 
He'd had a stroke. Uh, I lifted his head, calling out his name to my relief. His eyes opened. Then he said, Groovy star child. <sighs> Hasn't been the same since. What are you working on, Sally? Oh, she's nothing. Just a sampler. You're knitting. The sampler is for embroidery. What's that? Tis a bit of cloth with the saying, You're knitting. You're not embroidering. Honored thy father and mother. <sighs> Believe me, I'm trying. You're knitting. You're not in prep for a <laughs> It is an emergency. There was a crazed woman who's threatening to murder the town if her dog isn't returned. Well, crazed woman. Crazed child, more like. Um. And use the tomato on yourself. What? Do I have a tomato? I do not have a tomato. Sorry, I opened up the uh, the walkthrough. Just to be like, let's make this expedient. Well, here's the, the rubber stopper. I need that for the Leyden jar. Oh, she doesn't think... Oh, so maybe I can take the, uh, the magnet now as well. Cool, this looks like just what I needed. Oh, this is... Oh, gosh. The magnet stuck to my buttons. <laughs> I knew my magnetic personality, but this is ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Oh, there's, 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 what's I called? There's probably vegetables outside I can grab. Oh, yeah, look at this one that's different from all the others. You're my chosen few. Oh, I see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna smash that beautiful tomato, which I would, wouldn't eat as a tomato, but it, it's still a nice looking tomato. And then say, I need to have a bath. Then she's going to be like, I guess I'll get this ready for you, bitch. Smash it. An emergency, huh? I'll give her an emergency. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. oh, help. I cut myself. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, oh no. Oh. <sighs> What, what did you do? What, how did you do that? What should I What should I do? Uh, quick, boil some water. Ow, ow. Hurry before I get an infection and die. What? Right. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Uh, and Pepper's just standing like normal. Oh, that feels wonderful. I can feel my aura turning purple. Okay, so you'll help me with your key kite experiment, right? But child, I don't think any of the things I need for the experiment. I've left all my worldly stuff behind. Cosmic consciousness, remember? A deal is a deal, Mr. Franklin. You promised. All right, lad. If you bring me all the things to the experiment, I'll show you how to do it. All right. Thanks. And do 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 do. Oh, there you are, lad. I was worried about you. Are you feeling better? Oh, much better. Thanks, you. Let me take a look at your wound. If you could become infected. Oh, no, I mean, it's far too gruesome for a girl like you to look at. It's real gushy and red and stuff. You'd probably faint. Oh, I hardly think I would. Let me see. I mean, then I'd faint. Uh, you, you don't want to see it, honest. Hmm. <laughs> Tis, 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 silly boy. Just don't blame me if you get gangrene. Gosh, you didn't put up much of a fight, did you? I wonder what's in here. Oh. It's a recipe for chocolate bonbons. It has a note scrolled atop that says, Discard, too fattening. Okay, let's see. Finds a pet stack of recipe cards. Let's see. Blood pudding, steak and kidney pie, brain and eggs. Ugh. Don't mind if I do. I think I'll just borrow this recipe card. Whoa, what's what's going on? I feel funny. Gonna get ya. Gonna pull you right out of there. Here it comes, here it comes! Gotcha! Ah! Oh no, I sent it to Ben Franklin's boyhood! Oh, rat noses! 
More power! I must give the machine more power! I don't know, Ethan. My theory was not quite correct. I swim faster with the paddles, but they wear me out. I'm dog -o I'm dog tired. Oh, well, it was a fine idea, Ben. Hey, Ethan, could you fetch me my clothes? I'm freezing. Sure, friend. Oh, no, Ben, they're gone. Somebody stole them. Like me. Oh, Ethan, don't tell me that. I have to go home and make candles for my father. The Night Watch just put another big water. I tell you what, Ben, I'll run home and see what I can find for you here. <laughs> Wait here. Oh, where, where would I go, my friend? Ben Franklin, I am the ghost of Panama Pete. I have taken your clothes to warm my cold white bones. Bleah. Yikes. Darcy Hancock, you goose. I should have guessed it was you behind this mischief. Come out from behind that rock and give me my clothes. Never me pa gave me a hiding for what you done. My pa gave me a hiding for what you done. For what I've done? Uh, did Darcy, you were stealing from my father's shop. I had to stop you. You made your own trouble. Well, I give your pa. Your pa will give you a hiding when you don't get back in time for your chores, and then we'll be even. So if you want your clothes some bad, you'll have to come out and get them, or are you afraid of me? How daren't you, big lomics? What if a lady came by and saw my dingle dangle? Oh, you fancy the ladies, do you, Ben? You best such a chap, Darcy, or I'll box your ears when I get out. Don't think I won't. Oh, I'm in my boots, shaking I am. <laughs> this looks like a swimming hole. Somehow it doesn't look like Philadelphia. Look at this kid with these creepy eyes. Darcy's much bigger than Peppa, and he looks pretty mean. She'd better not touch him. You! You better give those clothes back right now! I don't know why I know what's going on! Nyeh, 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 nyeh. Come and get him, little boy! Oh man, this thing's nasty! Uh, hi, you look, uh, you should look like Ben Franklin. I am Ben Franklin! Friend, a bit, a little bit more like a fish right now. So could you help me with yonder fatwit or fuckwit? Darcy Hancock? Children don't say fuck with. Hey! You bet! I'll get your clothes back for you. I'll just go over there and kick his... Oh no, lad, don't kick him. Violence should be the last resort, not the first. Besides, he's much bigger than you are. You look like a clever clad, Claude. Maybe you could talk him into giving me my clothes. Listen, you... <laughs> Listen... Yeah. He doesn't want to talk! <laughs> well, I, I, I could strangle him. No, um, what's this? Oh, yes, the, the. Oh, you know what? How about a taste of your own medicine, you big dork? You did it right in front of him. Ooh, who dares call my name? Who dares? What? I'm the real ghost of Panama Pete, you foolish mortal imposter! Ah, uh, you've spoken my name, so I've risen to drink your blood! Ha 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 ha! There's nothing more I like than a plump, juicy boy. I think I'll eat your liver with corn chips and a nice cream soda. You don't know what that is. <laughs> Mommy! Ah, help is after me! Haha, <laughs> I didn't know that lung could run so fast, truly, friend. Twas worth the discomfort just to see it, but can I get some pants on now? Throw me your clothes, would you? Then do me the honor of coming home for supper. Taint, fancy, but you're welcome to look at my taint. I mean, uh, to, to it. Gee, thanks, Ben. I'll just pick up your clothes. Yikes, he's naked in there. And then I shall wear these clothes myself. I shall don this gay apparel. 
Here you go, Ben. Oh, thanks. I'll just get out and dry off. Hey, yeah, I'll just uh, wait by these rocks for you. Later that night with Ben and his family. I'm finishing up my chores, friend. I'll be out in a moment. Okay, Ben. The Boston Gazette. She doesn't have time. She's got to get out of here. Oh, she's got all the time in the world at the moment because it's not happening at the moment. Doesn't want to search that. Put your hand in the fire. Um, Ben's school books. She doesn't need an ink horn. Jeez, I'm not touching that. That's gross. Um. Do, 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 do. Ah. Apparently I'm just waiting for him and then I'm going to give him the string and get a kite. Is this just so I can look around and be like, Truth! Fires exist! True, a, fi a candle and soap making shop would have an industrial oven for he industrial? Industrial. With heating and meeting ingredients. True, Ben sent him to the school at different times in his life. Oh, thanks again for dinner, Ben. That was really good. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the mush, my friend. Mother would have made roast beef if she'd known she'd be expecting you. Hey, mush is my favorite. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. You're saying things strangely, friend. Speaking of sweating, I better start making candles. The night watchers put in a huge order this morning and they'll be expecting them tonight. Ugh, the smell. I hate candle making. What a drag. Hey, well, I won't have to drag them. The watch will just pick them up here. I I'll just light the fires and then get the wicks out and then... Oh, no! What? Oh, I forgot to buy wicks in town today. My father will skin my hide if he finds out. I'll just sneak out back for a few minutes and... Benjamin! Yikes. Yes, father? Did you buy the wicks when you were in town, didn't you? Uh, well, I, uh... Benjamin Franklin, if you forgot that, so help me, I'll switch you till you can't sit down for a fortnight. Uh, just a moment, father, I'm just looking for them. Friend, I don't suppose you have any wick, do you? I'd be eternally grateful if you could help me. I mean, technically it's not a wick, but it's close enough. That won't help. It's a string! Unless you want, you need these. Some cotton string. Oh yeah, here we go. Will this work? Oh, bless you, we'll soon find out. Excuse me, my friend. Here, yeah, father, it was um with my school books. Good grief, boy, that's not very much, is there? Hey, well, you see, I am... Um... Oh, never mind, twill do. Just, just be glad you... I'm just glad you didn't forget. Now, go tell your friend good night. You've got much work to do tonight. Yes, father. Thank you, my friend. I thought I was... I was this... I was cat's meat. Okay, there we go. Here, take this kite as a token of my gratitude. Oh, I can. I, uh... Nonsense, take it. Thank you, Ben. Think nothing of it. So we go out tomorrow and fly tomorrow. We can go swimming if the day doesn't grow too hot. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I really... Yikes! Boy, my father's whiskers. It's too hot in this shop. Oh, well, best to get to making candles. Wow, that was bizarre. Jeez, I hope I'm all here. I know, my thing. I don't have a dangle dangle. It's fine. It's all good. Alright, so we have gone through the time. Ah, oh, yes, we're gonna go talk to Paul Richard. And look at that big old key he's got that's very wang shaped. Hello, sir. You look better than the last time I saw you. Where hast thou seen me before? I do not think I know thee. Wait, hast thou a sister? Uh, no. Well, yes. I, I mean, sort of. I, I saw you when you were in the socks. My, uh, sister let you out. Ah, good and kind lass. I feel like I owe thee and thine a favor, lad. Is there anything I can help you with? Well, I'd appreciate if you could answer a quest few questions for me. That I'd be happy to. What would thou know? I just can't believe Ben Franklin's the cause of this. Did his ailment come on quickly? Or was it a gradual thing? Oh, it was very sudden. The old gent fell over, and when he got up, he had all these wild ideas in his head. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, so his wife tells me. I'm her. 
I'm her pimp. Uh, he's my oldest friend. His plight grieves me more than I can say. As to the fact that I have to now speak publicly against him. I'm sorry, Mr. Richard. I wish there was something I could do to help. Those pews are terrible, Mr. Richard. I can't believe the way they treat this community. Why did you all put up with it? Lad, until Ben went out of his mind, we resisted the pews like a pack of hungry badgers. We blocked their way at every turn. Why? Ben was ready to re go to London to represent our fine colony when he was seized by his tragic ailment. Oh, tis tragic! Uh, but why are you affected by this strange malady, sir? What makes you immune? I do not know, lad, unless it's simply that I know bet better than most. I have lived, I mean, been around the old mule for such a long time. We all, I know when he was well, when he was ill. Believe me, boy, the bad is ill. Mr. Richard, the pew stole my dog. He ran into the carriage and little that creep little Emma scooped him up. That is bad news, lad. I don't know what to tell thee. The pews have kidnapped many a pup, and the poor little curs have never been the same. Oh, Mr. Richard, what am I going to do? Lockjaw's my very best friend. Although I would advise against it, the only thing seems to be a bold rescue. Oh, if only Ben were well. He would advise thee about how to do it. Sigh. Yes, I say so. You sure are a brave man, Mr. Richard. It takes a lot of guts to speak out against the pews and Ben Franklin. Not so brave, lad. Just determined not to see this client fine colony on his knees like a hooker. I'll die before I act like a fool and kiss the pews' ruffles and their asses. Jeez, Mr. Richard, do you think they'll, out they'll kill you? No, don't you worry about me, lad. I'll just take one step ahead of them. Just find the dog before the pews do something despicable to the poor little fellow. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I, I, I talked to him and get more proverbs. Lad, I'm really not all that intriguing. I need your proverbs, Mr. Richard. Don't be cheeky, lad. I'll smack thee in the head. Try to take the key. Sure. Mr. Richard, can I have your wang key? I really need it for something really important. If I give thee the key, I'll give thee the key if thou will help me distribute these proverbs. I fear time is growing short and you're yawning for even though it's early in the morning. What are proverbs, Mr. Richard? A proverb is saying what points out the error of a person's ways. I hope they'll cure my, follow, my fellow colonists of their follies. Wilt thou help me? Let me get this straight. If I pass out your proverbs, you'll give me the key? Such is my offer, lad. But how do I get to know which who gets what proverb? Read each proverb and judge which colonist would learn the most from it. Okay, truth is sometimes we reporters don't mind shoving in people's faces. Here's the first batch. Come to back to me whence thou hast found the true owner of each. By then I will have more for thee. Alright, let's see what we got. Quarrels never last long if only one side could, if, uh, if on one side could lay the wrong. In other words, stop quarreling over civil things that don't matter. You're probably both wrong. We know who needs that. Mr. Picker, I think you might find this interesting. You know, little boy, my hour is stretched really thin right now. Why don't you be a nice kid and give that to Quibby? Miss Quabble, I have something for you. If I would appreciate it if you read it. A present of him be. Oh, how sweet. Let's see what it says. Quarrels never last long if on one side only lay the wrong. What's that supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that both the vicar and I are both wrong? That's ridiculous. That's stupid. That's, that's true. Oh, dear. Oh, Victor. How could I have been so mean to you? Oh, Cookie ears, I'm so ashamed. I I behave like a beast. Sniff. Victor Pooh. Oh, Quibby Wibs. Oh, sorry, sweetums, I love you. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Sugar Toes, I love you too. Ugh, gang me with a time machine. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Okay, so they're sorted. What else we got here?
If your meals, you need less medicine. In other words, don't pig out, you make yourself sick. And we also have all things are easy to industry, all things lead to stuff. In other words, don't be lazy. Life will be a lot more fun if you get off your tail and do something. Let's go give this to the gluttonous man. I think he's up this way. Been a while. Yeah, here we go. Oh, that goat. Arf, arf. General Lee, this is for you. You uh, might find it interesting. Oh, good boy. Oh, boy. Is it food? Oh, it's a bit of pastry from Goody. Mm. What? It's just a proverb. Oh, bother. I suppose I read it. <clears throat> eat fewer summers and you'll need fewer medicines. Oh, you can't mean me. I don't eat that much. Well, I, <clears throat> I eat in moderation. I burp. Moderation, huh? Why didn't you tell me what you ate today? Let's see, I started off with some muffins, some biscuits, and gravy, half dozen sausage links, oh, sausage links, yes, please, um, a gallon of milk, two dozen eggs, a loaf of bread, some cinnamon rolls, a rasher of bacon, a tin of biscuits, a pint of jam, a salmon, a trout, a, ha a ham and a half, a ham and a half, woo, them some big hams, uh, two whole fried chickens, some plain white toast, a bunch of grapes, a bunch of apples, a bunch of oranges, a bunch of watermelons, a quart of boiled Brussels sprouts with cheese, two bushels of fried okra, a gallon of Vegemite on rye, dear God, six jars of anchovies, a heaping plate of brains and eggs, a bucket of chopped liver and onions, four cow tongues, two fruit cakes, a gross of raw oysters, oh, raw oysters, uh, a possum, a woodchuck, a squirrel, a mess of grits, a slew of salt pork, an exultation of larks. A fried peanut butter and banana sandwich and a wafer thin mint. That's disgusting. Ugh. Oh, horrors, I'm a glutton, it's true. How could I have done this to myself? Oh, blasted, I'm a wretched porker. I'll lose weight, that's what. I'll be a twig before you know it. I just wish I knew about those wretched pews. Ah, oh, farewell, lad. Well, and then the last proverb we have is for Roland here. And a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, Roland, check this out. What is it, kiddo? Oh, a proverb. No thanks. I can't get those back on the black market. They make smugglers feel guilty. Okay. Well, hers is about penny pinching. You can't blame the pews for weight gain. <laughs> no, because the poos um, make you go the other way. Ah, da, 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 da. That reminds me, I should take my um, probiotic. <laughs> my probiotic chocolate. I don't know if I do it like I did the other day. I'm just saying. I've forgotten I already had it. Um, who am I going to Oh. I'm giving it to the post office, man. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, he's asleep. Here. Hey, Billy, I got something for you. What is it? New pillow, I hope. No, yeah. Oh, look, I'm pretty carving. Let's see what it says. All, industry, easy, all things are easy to industry. All things lead to sloth. What does that mean? I'm not a slothful, am I? I'm... Yikes! Oh man, I'm being a real sluggard. I should be so ashamed of myself. Yeah, ashamed. How could I be so lazy and useless? My karma has to be like totally scammy right now. Come on, Hiddle. We gotta clean this joint up. Yeah, clean it up. I don't know about you, little dude. You show me the error of my ways. I just wouldn't be so confused about Ben. Oh, ready? Are you ready, Hiddle? Yeah, Billy. Let's go! Also, hello, Fur. I hope you've had a good day. <sighs> Water. Let them do their work. There seems to be an emphasis on all seven sins. I mean, we've got gluttony and sloth. I think... I'm just trying to think, is there one that's specific, like, prideful? I mean, I... Could you consider what these two were doing prideful? Oh, hello, Jayla. Because, like, what's that called? Um, they were arguing with each other because neither of them wanted to admit that they could have been wrong. 
You really hope it doesn't get to lust. Hello, Mr. Richard. I finished parsing out the first three proverbs. Did they, lad? Truly? Tell me, did they work as I hoped? Well, you bet they worked. I've never seen anything like it. I couldn't believe all the blubbering and yelling that went on. Oh, that news gladdens my heart. Here, I finished the next three. I pray that they are as successful as the first trio. Mr. Richard, while I'm here, could I ask you a few questions? Uh, I suppose, if thou will make harassed about it, I fear I have much time. I have to ask them about everything again. Uh, Mr. Richard, I don't think there's any hope for Ben Franklin. <sighs> I'm not about to discuss that old scallywag, laddie. I must concentrate on my work, and thinking about it makes me too angry. Yeah, too angry about the man. They seem to be a lot, uh, you seem to know, uh, you see a lot of things that other people don't, Mr. Richard. Have you heard anything about my dog? I've heard nothing, but if I were here, I would try to save him. Terrible things happen to the dogs I'm a cast her beady eyes upon. Have you heard anything from the pews lately, Mr. Richard? That I fear the pew, it is the pews that I fear will end my proverb carving endeavors once and for all. I'll not waste them talking about them. All right. You really are a man of dedication and courage. Have you always been an influential figure in the community? Before this whole unfortunate situation, I was hardly noticed at all. My life was simpler and easier then. Sigh. Alright, what are my new proverbs? Oh. Alright, I'll save. Paper four. Boop. Apparently it does not like that uh, new numpad. All right, what are my new proverbs? Early to bed, early to wise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Oh, yeah, if you were... Oh, yeah, well, that, we know who that goes for. It goes to these brothers. Mr. Hardy, I think you might find this interesting. Oh, what is it, little dude? Ah, oh, it's a little pretty carving and a little poem. Let me show it to my brother, too. He loves stuff like this. Dear God, that fucking nurse! <laughs> Well, that was heavy. I mean, my nose was heavy. Do you think he means us, Marty? I mean, we usually don't go down until the sun comes up. I think so, brother. I feel way stupid. You're right, brother. We've been a couple of silly dudes. I think we should get back to our studies, you dig? I hear you, dude. We've already waited too much time. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts, little guy. You've shown us the error of our ways. You're pretty welcome, hearty boys. You, you're pretty nice guy underneath all that weirdness and big noses. Oh, I just wish I knew what to do about the pews. I wish Ben would tell us what to do next. Oh, let's go, brother. The world of medicine awaits us. That gigantic noses. Hey, short person. I appreciate the help, but I'm totally behind in my reading. I'll talk to you later, okay? How you feeling about this, Marty? Feel awful, little dude. I'm too much. I'm too depressed to play. The pews are making our lives miserable. And there's nothing I can do about it. Excuse me, little dude. Little reading. See you later. Who do I ask to get the frisbee? They're gonna give me the frisbee. You gotta give me the frisbees, guys. Shouldn't they be solving mysteries? <laughs> They're not those Hardy brothers. Oh. Oh. Okay. Mr. Reveler? I thought they were the Hardy Brothers. Uh, am I to assume this is the... This is the work of the odious pews? You're damn right. They're telling us that the king imposed a stamp tax on all the paper goods in Philadelphia. That's totally bogus. What did my poor yo-yo have to do with paper stuff? Sub? So, wait, yo-yo? What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, I hate to bother you in your hour of grief. What the fuck? The hour of grief? What are you talking about? Have you heard anything about my dog? No, I heard some pretty ho um, gnarly howling from the mansion, though. Poor little dude. Mr. Reveler, what does Ben Franklin think about this rampant taxing of the poor? Oh, he says money is only a material object. He told us not to dock our commas by worrying about it, but no one took his yo-yo. Oh, his yo-yo was stolen? <gasps> True. People who could afford books and had an education read a great deal in colonial times. It was a popular form of entertainment. Just imagine they didn't have a TV or 
video games and they survived. They're already rewriting history. I mean, this, that's the whole point of this game. It's that they were re Marty. But are they the, really the Revler Brothers? Throckmorton. I thought it was Throckmorton, Hardy, and, and um, Marty Throckmorton. Sorry. <laughs> Marty Throckmorton. <laughs> I'm named, my last name is named after my brother. But Mr. Revler. So he doesn't want to talk to me. Give me the fucking frisbee. I don't know what else to do about your dog, little short person. I wish I did. Let me look at the walkthrough. I'm just, just I'm afraid that. Um. Okay. Oh, I can give you the um, recipe card. Uh, I don't think he actually gives me the frisbee. I misread that. Doctors, woo! Let's go get ourselves that uh, something from the. Oh, God. Move over. Pepper's edges is not not as good as you'd hope. Oh God, I forgot about this. Good morning, Mrs. Gumdrops. Well, if it isn't the two most handsome, horrific little children gents about town, James and Gray, Nathan Grayson. Well, you p p boys probably don't remember winning this competition anymore, do you? Good morning to you, lads. What can I do for you? We've got a penny to spend, ma'am. What's the daily specials? Oh, it's cabbage cookies today, boys. Would you like some? Oh, yes, ma'am, we would. Here you go, laddies. Oh. The... They've turned us into zombies. Just... Out of the way, you little ragamuffins! If you can maybe pay your taxes, maybe I won't arrest you for loitering. Hand over your money. But we haven't any money, just a penny. Want a cabbage cookie? No! Here, yeah, give the, me those things. They'll do for now. I don't want you to see your little weasels in town again today. I'm taking both your balls. I've made the real life children cry. I can't believe they took our stuff, James. At least they didn't take our penny, Nathan. It's a good thing, because we owe it to Mrs. Gumdrops. Oh, forget the penny, lad. I know how dreadful those cookies are. Now run along before he comes back. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Gumdrops. Yes, thanks. We'll stop crying. Let me just see. Uh, peppers. Pop art. Peppers. Adventures. Adventures. I've read, made a new word. Adventures. In time. Real life. Children. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, they're not from Philadelphia. They told me they won a contest in a far off land of Sierra, and that's why they're here. I must. You must have asked me. Who the fuck those kids were? Gosh! Gosh, I wonder if all those people from Sierra look like that! What a weird place! Just to, I'm looking on their um the TV tropes page for this, just to see if the real life kids come up at all, because searching for real life children didn't bring anything up. Nope, apparently not.
But obviously, either they they look like unholy abomin. They they not they don't match the world, so they are unholy abominations. Uh, that's putting it mildly. Uh, recipe card. I mean, Pepper can't use that here. There we go. Just I couldn't use it on her body. She only her head wants it. Goody, I have something for you. I thought you might like it. <sighs> My recipe for bon balls. Thank you, lad. If only I had some chocolate to bake them with, we'd be in business. Oh, how I miss bonbons. I'll tell you what. I'll give you this lovely jar of pickled cabbage in trade for the recipe card. <clears throat> Thanks, Goody. Oh, drat these flies. I'd give anything to have my fan back for my rocking chair. Excuse me, lad. The heat has quite overcome me. I mean, I had a jar of cabbage. Good lord. I know what to do with that jar of cabbage. I'm gonna feed it to this man. No. <laughs> to the goat. Here you go, little goat. I bet you just love cabbage. Oh, yep. Yeah. You were pretty hungry, huh? I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> now I have an empty jar. Can I put this on here? Yeah, carefully line the jar with tin. Can I put the stopper in as well? Uh, yeah, I need to put water in before then. Um, so let's read these other two problems. What do we got? Where the gossip who speaks ill of thy f neighbors, with thy neighbors, she likely speaks ill of thee. And, uh, what we got? Wealth is not who has it, but who enjoys it. Don't waste your money, but don't waste your money, but do have fun with it. Don't be fucking cheap. Hello, little boy. Here, Miss Pincher, you might be interested in this. What is it? Gold? Silver? Oh boy! Oh, oh, shoot, it's just a proverb. I guess I'll read it. It goes, wealth is not he who has it, but he who enjoys it. Now what's that supposed to mean? You can't mean me. I enjoy my money. I'm not a miser. I'm not a skinflint. I'm... Oh, who am I trying to kid? Moths fly out of my purse every time I open it. <laughs> I'm a franky old miser. A cranky one at that. Well, I'm going to change my ways. What am I going to do? Maybe I'll go for shopping. Yeah, groovy. I just wish I knew what to do with those pews. If only Ben would give me some advice. Oh, well, see you later, little boy. I'm going out of town. She's greed, yeah. I mean, you could also say Roland's probably greed, and the uh, the the Hardy Boys. Thank you, Pepper. Uh, I guess they could be sloth as well. So it, maybe they don't they don't have lust, but they've got plenty of the others. So let's get our. Um, I don't think she's in the millinery shop. Not ye old so and so. What did you knock on there? Take a look at this, Miss Tail Teller. Oh, what is it? Somebody's mails? Papers from somebody's garden pail? Let me see. Beware the gossip who speaks ill of thy neighbours. With thy neighbours she likely speaks ill of thee. What? What is this? I'm not a gossip. You can't possibly mean me. I'll never talk about anyone. It's not my fault that all my neighbours are weird. Did I tell Nelly to be a grouch? No. Did I tell Penny to be such a miser she won't buy food for her husband? He's dead, by the way. No. Did I? Oh, dear. Well, I guess I might be a gossip after all. Oh, I'm so confused. Excuse me, little boy. I want to think about this. Like, what? Would that be pride? Hey, Mr. Richard, I'm back for more. What? Oh, tis thee, lad. I'm sorry, Mr. Richard. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm nervous because the redcoats have been watching me. That's all I have. I mean, you haven't seen a single one, but please take these last two proverbs up with you before they arrest you as well. Hey, no way. I'm not leaving you here for those vultures. Come with me. I love you. Lad, thou art kind as well as brave, but I must stay and close up my stand. But fear not, for I am quick and quiet as a shadow. They'll never catch me. Oh, really? You don't look so shadowy with your head stuck in the town stocks. <laughs> well, I've learned from my mistakes, thou sharp-tongued rascal. So off with thee. I'm just going to sit here and, and 
be dead eyed. Oh my god. Totwoods make their friends. A spoonful of honey will catch more flies than a, than a gallon of vinegar. Don't say mean pe things to people. Unless it's funny. <laughs> no, probably not even then. Oh. oh, that's right. I needed stones removed. Do I have stones? I do not, but I could probably pick some up. Toss something out there. Well, I've got a whole heap of things. I just don't know if... Let me throw the magnet. I'm sure it won't break anything. Oh, where did I get the fucking stones from? Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. I've already done that. And I've done that. <laughs> Use your pebbles. Where'd I get the pebbles from? Do I just have to find a scene that I can pick up some, some pebbles from? Apparently I don't want to put my hand in the pothole. I don't want to keep searching forever, so let me go pebbles. Ah, in the alleyway. God damn it, Pepper. This apparently is the only place you can find pebbles. These pebbles may come in handy. Hello! Hey, who's there? It's you get lost! Please, Mrs. Nettlesome. All I want is a moment of your time. I'd be it quick. I didn't talk to her before, so. Mrs. Nettle, Ben's told you to start acting the way you're acting because he's under an evil influence. You're the evil influence, you little beast. Off with you. Have you seen the pews around today, Mrs. Nettlesome? Yes. The general and I may came in earlier. They both were in silk dog pajamas. Silly twits. Silk dog pajamas? Yuck, poor Lockjaw! Have you heard anything about my dog, Mrs. Donaldson? That rotten Percy came in earlier and wanted two pairs of his pants sewed up. I guess your dog did it. I guess that I should thank the mutt for the business, eh? <laughs> ah, do you know what you yield, so-and-so? Mrs. Nettleson, doesn't it bother you that the colony you've lived in all this time is suddenly so weird? Of course it bothers me. Do you think I love these stupid love beads? But Ben told us to do it and he's leader of the community. Didn't it ever occur to you to think for yourselves? Nope, too much work. Well, I've got... I got a proverb for you. Whee! Here it comes! What's this? Oh, it's just some stupid wooden carving. Let's see what it says. Todd to make their friends. A handful of honey will catch more flies than a gallon of vinegar. Oh dear, I suppose this means me. It must! Oh no, how could I have been so mean to everybody? I'm sorry, little boy. I've just been awful to you. It's okay, Mrs. Nettleson. I know you weren't really yourselves. That's no excuse. I was terribly rude to you. I was terribly rude to everybody. Excuse me, I need to go inside and figure out how to apologize to everybody. Oh, if only Ben could give me some advice. Oh well, I'll see you later, little boy. And the last one's going to be for Roland. Let's see what it, what it says. Avoid dishonest game. No price can recomp comp recomp <laughs> recompense the pangs of vice. Recompense. Rec oh, for goodness sakes. Recompense. 
Roland, hello! How are you? Huh? I'm always am. As I am. I'm one with the sun. I'm one with the moon. I'm one with the winds and the cosmos. Really? Nah, my backside's getting sore from sitting around here all day, and these cool shades are making dents in my nose. So what can I do for you, Cosmic Cat? Nothing, actually. I just came to give you something. Oh, I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. Oh, cool. A poem. Let's see. D a poem? Okay. Avoid dishonest gain. No price can recompense the pairings of vice. Hey, you saying I'm dishonored? I am not! Every game I try, I run is perfectly fair. Every customer has a 1 in 1500 chance of winning. I'm- Oh, rats, I'm dishonest cheating curb shock. I admit it. Oh, I'm glad my mama can't see me now. Ah, oh, will I ever get this stain off my karma? Oh man, I better change my ways. I'm so confused. I wish Ben would tell me what to do. Oh well, I guess I'll meditate on my sins. Um... 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 I think I liked him better before. Peppa, go down. Oh no! I got my key. Oh no, who could have done such a thing to poor Richard Stan? And where's poor Richard? I hit the wrong thing again. It's a carpet bag. Oh. It's full of women's clothes. Who would have guessed? I don't remember what happens now. Ah, oh, yes. We're going into the house. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem like anyone's envy or lust. Lust. What do you think about this bag, Sally? That's my mother. She'll be wanting it if she ever comes home. Oh, she's she's nude. <laughs> she's nude out there. Um. <laughs> you get it, Richard Stan. Richard stands. Yes. Walk through the beaded wall. Ah! Hello. Was this here before? It's an iron rod. Okay. Yeah, Ben doesn't need it. At least Ben doesn't think he needs it. But I'm, I'm about to rock his world. I'm going to put this water in here. I'm going to put the iron rod through the stopper. Okay, so I guess I need to put the stopper in first. Put the rod into it. Blade and jar's done. Yes, I know Pepper already has it, but... Uh... Pepper can't use that here, can't she? Guess maybe I just talk to him now that I have everything. Nope. Nope, just follow your instincts. Okay. Put the stuff in the jar. Oh, I just give the shit to him. Alright. Where's he gonna put it? He's in a fucking hot tub. Maybe I need to give it to him in order. Give the jar, key, kite, string, and key. And the schematic to bet. I just tried that! My laden jar's complete. Maybe I'll start with the schematic. Here's the schematic for the experiment, Ben! Fine, fine, lad. Just set it down by the tub. Look what I got! You know, that, that kite reminds me of one I had when I was a little boy. 
Wow, heavy symbolism. Do you ever think what a kite really represents? Nope. Oh, the shallowness of youth. Well, set it down here and I'll watch it for you. Cool. Alright, next along. Will this string work for the experiment, Ben? Oh, definitely. That's pure silk, isn't it? Fabric of the gods. Just put it down and I'll watch it for you. Hey, did you hear that? It sounded like thunder. Or was it the rumbling of your own troubled heart, my child? Or maybe it was my stomach. I haven't had lunch yet. You feed me, kid? Feed me. Will this key work for the experiment, Ben? Yeah, sure, it's a fine key, child. Just put it down. Hey, that was thunder. I wonder if it's gonna rain. Take my job, Ben. You'll need this for the experiment. Wow, that's pretty cool. What's the thing called again? It's a laying jaw! You ought to know you've done all sorts of experiments with them. Oh yeah, remember? That was all in the past. Live for today, you dig? Go ahead and sit your j pretty jaw down if you want. Yikes, that was some serious thunder. Hey, way cool. I guess it proves that our karma was to do today's experiment. That's everything, isn't it? It's time. Yep, time for a nap. Mr. Franklin, I got you your hot water. I gathered up all the parts of the experiment. Now you gonna get out of that hot tub and show me how it works. Do I have to? <sighs> you, you wouldn't want to have to do this later, would you? No, now! Alright, let's put this silly thing together. Oh, that string between Pepper's legs never looks right. Okay, child, let me clue, clue you in with what's going to happen. With this experiment, we're going to prove that lightning is actually made of electricity. That cosmic lightning is going to be drawn to the kite because lightning can't resist anything that flies around next to it, you dig? Because lightning loves silk, remember? Fabric of the gods, remember? Yeah, I know that, pal. And then what? Well, uh... I do some sick tricks. Patient, child, patience. Once the lightning gets close to the kite, the electricity will groove its way down the string and hit this key, you dig? Then, you put the key on the bottle, and we have a bottle full of lightning. Pretty, totally groovy, right? I, I get it! A lightning jaw is actually like a battery! It'll hold the electricity for us! Yeah, that is pretty groovy! Of course, the lightning strikes the string, Things will get a little hotter. Maybe we may end up looking like baked yams. Anyway, here we go. Yahoo! Wait. Oh no, I think the lightning may have just hit my totally groovy house. Man, this storm's bad. Maybe we should go inside. Maybe we shouldn't, uh. Oh, fuck my kite. Oh, jeez. I'm dead. Oh, God, my underpants. Well, well, that was a bit more electricity than you were expecting. Are you are you all right, lad? Yeah, I'm okay. How about you? You look somehow better, even if you are a little fried around the edges. Oh, I do feel I have this strange buzzing in my head. Oh dear, oh dear. This I hope there's something left in my house. Hurry, lad, hurry. Oh, jeez, Ben, look at this. Oh. Well, it was a totally noble experiment, anyhow. Goodness gracious, is that hot tub I've been spending all my time in? It sure is. I should be saying it's toasted. Aye, this is nothing but a mess now. Help yourself to anything you may find in the rocket, lad. Deborah will have my head if I don't clean this up soon. Thanks, Ben. You look uh, better, you know? Better? Oh, I suppose I'm no longer wearing those ridiculous clothes. Yeah, that was a little scary. Oh, I can't wait to show my darling Deborah that I've regained my senses. Excuse me, my boy. Oh, Deborah. Oh, Mrs. Franklin. I want to do you. <laughs> what exactly did the Layton Jar do? It held lots and lots of mayonnaise, but it also stored energy like a battery. Drop! Arr! Arr! Which statement's not true, Ben and Franklin 
invented swimming paddles. He was a strong swimmer. He went to sea with his brother. He was a fine, fine sailor boy. He went to sea with his brothers. Not true. He never went to sea. Or with his brother. Um, arr, what does the sign of the blue ball mean? Um, blue ball. Blue balls. Blue balls. Well, the only thing that we've come up with with jo Josiah's Franklin's candle and soap making shop. Yes! Oh! Uh, he learnt candle making, but maybe did he learn everything? I think maybe he learnt all of the above. Yes! Oh! Oh! What was the key kite experiment trying to prove? It was supposed to prove the existence of electricity. It was supposed to prove the lightning was electricity. It was supposed to prove that electricity is conducted by silk. It was supposed to give people... Prove that pe electricity shocks people. I mean, it's it does do that, but I believe it was boo, boo, bleep, be. Ah oh, shit! Ah oh, shit! They're dead. Act four: Locked door and the stamp tax, or the terrible truth about putrid poo. Look for this shit. We know you won't. However, we're going to save, because that's what we're doing. We're doing one chapter at the moment. Save this over paper 4. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Indeed we will. Now, let's pick out another game to play. <laughs>